Ali Hussein Sajwani is the Managing Director of Operations and Technology at real estate giant Damak, founded by his father, Hussein Sajwani. We join him at the company headquarters today to hear about his personal journey in the company, what Damak is doing to stay competitive, their global ambitions, and much more. Thanks for being with us today, Ali. Thank you for having me. I want to start with your personal journey. Your father made sure that you experienced different sides of the business before you became a manager. I started my journey in 2014 officially. Really, I started when I was 13 years old. So, you know, summers, weekends, rotation programs, meetings uh, at, in the evenings. And my dad, even at a young age, my dad really used to take our opinions into consideration. Uh, he used to sit and discuss with us. Uh, take our ideas and add on to them, challenge them. And I think that was the, the best learning experience I could have asked for. When you started your career with Damak, you already had a lot of knowledge from home. So what was it like around the dinner table? Our discussions have always been business. Uh, 20 years ago, since I was a kid, and even up till now. So my younger brother Mehdi gets frustrated at times. You know, we were going for family dinner and he messages me saying, bro, I'm not coming today. I'm like, why? He's like, I'm tired of talking about business. I want to go with my friends, you know. And we used to feel the same when we were younger. I'm not going to lie and say that, oh, it was always exciting. But today we appreciate that fact. Uh, my brother Abbas, when he was 14 years old, used to go to the sales offices. And he used to know all of our project selling price, price per square foot, what are the terraces, what are the balcony areas. Uh, so we really learned from the ground up. And I think that's the reason today our management respects us and we've been able to grow within the company. So what do you think is the most valuable part of having to wear the construction boots and then uh, work as a sales operator? What's the one thing you, you would say you took with you? I think the, what the, more, the, the biggest added value I gained from that is that even today when we're looking at new opportunities and new businesses, we really go into the details. So if I'm looking at a plot in the Maldives to build a new resort, when the consultant comes in, I just don't take what he says for granted. I challenge him. I deal with the more junior staff. I look at the actual breakup of the finite feasibility studies. Uh, what are you taking for your cost of construction? What are you taking for your sale price? Uh, when the cost of construction, how are you pricing your concrete? Are you taking into account inflation is uh, going up in the past few years? Are you putting in a cushion in your feasibility study to account for higher prices of certain materials. These type of questions only come up when you've really been trained to go into that level of detail. And when you start from the ground up, the way we did, it teaches you and that becomes second nature to you. And you've been trained to challenge. Challenge everything. Our father has always challenged us on everything we, we ask him. So it kind of becomes, again, second nature for you. Pick up that trait and you challenge everything that's communicated to you. You're the eldest son, but you're still seen as the son of, uh, of Hussein. When do you think is the moment where you went from being the son to a manager? I think we were never really considered as the son. We were always considered as the manager from a young age. And the reason I say that is because the way our father is with us. Our father is more of a boss than a father. At home in the evening, on holiday, he's a dad. But other than that, he's a hardcore boss. And the people around him who work with him know that of him. So they know that if his son walks into the room but he's not performed, he'll tell you to get out of the room, you know? So, uh, and we appreciate that about him. It's tough love, but it makes us strong and it makes us performance driven. If we look at what you're bringing to the table, uh, innovation, looking at new technologies, can you maybe talk about the impact of technology on the real estate industry and then how Damak is planning to incorporate new technologies? I think the impact of technology in the construction business overall has been quite minimal. If you look at fintech, how it's disrupted the financial industries, it's done it in a major way. Whereas prop tech is still lagging in that sense. That's not to say that there's not a lot of great technology around, but adoption has been slow. Uh, we hope that will change. It's not going to be easy to change. It's, uh, construction tends to always be a very owner-driven, entrepreneurial business. Um, in the construction business, it's no secret. There's a lot of games that get played with materials and uh, cheating on site, etc. So it's not, not always on in the benefit of the contractors to adopt technology, which will streamline and bring clarity to these processes. Uh, with us today, of course, 
We tried to implement BIM system seven years ago. We were one of the first people in the region to do it. But funnily enough, the consultants and the contractors weren't willing to adopt it at the time. Uh, that's changing now. There's much better quality contractors which exist in town. So we're really focusing on using those type of technologies to A, streamline the construction process, uh, check for defects early, uh, make sure we're delivering quality products to the customers. And, and what kind of technologies are you looking at to enhance the customer's experience? Oh, we've implemented several uh, different technologies over the years. So we really started our digital transformation in 2020. Uh, we digitized all of their processes. We introduced applications for the customers. Today our, application, uh, today, our customers can sign their SPA on our application from the initial point of sale. All their payments can be done through the application. We've integrated with the central bank over here, so they can do all of their bank transfers through our app. So uh, all of their uh, amenity bookings, if they're already living in our communities, are through the applications. Service charge payments. Uh, we're actually now implementing uh, innovative ways to increase community engagement. So we're working with technology partners from the UK where our community members can take videos and pictures in our community, upload them on social media, and they win prizes on a daily basis for the best content. So all of these applications focus on the customer experience. We have, uh, so today our call center, we receive a thousand calls a day. Half of those have been maintenance related calls. As of February 1st, all of that entire process is completely digitized. So c complaints or customers raising issues with maintenance in their houses, they don't have to come through the call center anymore. They go on the app and we've broken it down for them such that they can specify what's the exact issue, whether it's a leakage or there's smell or it's plumbing or whatever it is. They have the option to upload a picture and we have a specialized command center now which takes a look at the customer issue as soon as it comes in. So when the resource is deployed to the customer's house, he already knows what the problem is. He knows what replacement parts he needs. So instead of the guy, instead of the maintenance worker going three, four times to the customer's house, he comes for the first time, he knows what the problem is beforehand, he changes the part, he fixes the issue, and the customer is happy. This was implemented since This 20... is being implemented February 1st, 2023. Okay. So we've been working on it for the last six months. We, have, we had over 400 different categorizations of maintenance issues that can come up in a house. And it was about bringing that down to make the customer's life easy. Would you say that Damak is leading when it comes to the implementation of technology? We are going to be the first people regionally probably to implement uh, resolving customers' maintenance issues in the way which we're doing. How is Damak going to keep its competitive edge in the market today? So if you read, if you look at our slogan, it says Damak live the luxury. We've been a luxury brand since our incorporation, since Damak Properties was incorporated in 2002. We always focus on that segment of the market and we will continue to do so. If you look at the dynamics of the property market in Dubai today, the luxury market is probably the one booming the most. It's at the forefront. And it's becoming crowded. The luxury market? Also. It's not really crowded today. If you look at the most of the developers in the market, there's very few that have always focused on luxury. Mm -hmm. uh, there's us, there's a couple of others, but the majority of players still focus on the mid-segment. Can you tell us how you're going to market new projects to the market? So we're very quick and we're, we're always very much in touch with our customers and agents. So you know market trends change and we adapt very quickly to those trends. Uh, in the end of 2021, almost a year and a half ago, when we launched Cavalli Tower in uh, Dubai Marina, we were the first project over there to bring out these massive penthouses on the top and big two and three bedroom units with huge terraces and swimming pools on each terrace. Now, it's not a coincidence that that project sold out on the night of the launch. It sold out because we were in touch with our agents and they were telling us customers want bigger units right now. There is a gap today in the luxury segment. Customers want to have the uh, idea of a villa in the sky. And we quickly adapted and launched and was hugely successful. Customers today are looking at community living we are in touch with our customers and we know that they love communities built around water. Now, beachfront land is limited in Dubai. So what did we do? We brought the beach to our customers. We have man-made beaches in Damak Hills, Damak Hills 2. We launched Damak Lagoons, which is an entire community built around water. Today, I get phone calls before the launch of every Damak Lagoons cluster of people saying, please allocate me a unit. I tell them, sorry, like, I can't do anything about it because we have wait lists on those products. 
So it shows you when you're in touch with your customer and you know what they want, you can tailor your products to the customers. It's a very good position to be. It took 20 years to build. It's a, it's a large infrastructure we've built over here. So it's not something we've done overnight. A lot of people discovered, I think, Dubai during COVID. Mm -hmm. And now with changes in the world, it's definitely a, a very attractive place to be. Maybe you can discuss Damak's approach to sustainability in general, and then how will it incorporate green building and practices that are sustainable in future <coughs> projects? Sustainability is in our DNA. We've been working on it for a long time. We will continue to work on it and improve on it, not just in the projects, but company-wide across all of our group companies. So we have properties, fashion, data centers, hospitality, resorts, etc. And we're actually going to publish a sustainability report in 2023 on what we have done so far as a group and what our key initiatives and plans are moving forward. Yeah, I know you're investing 100 million in the metaverse. Can you share your vision around that? Sure. So our version of the metaverse, first of all, we defined it by how is the metaverse going to help them up? Mm -hmm. What is the added value for us as a company? Number one is revenue. So the first initiative is to build digital twins, very high-end digital twins, of our premium products and communities to further enable the sales journey. We sell over 100 million dirhams a month online, which is a small percentage of our overall sales. But again, this is it's not in an immersive experience. It's on a Zoom call or a Microsoft Teams call, and the sales guy is pitching the product on a brochure. When you change that experience and the customer can actually touch and feel the unit, change the finishes on demand, uh, explore all his surroundings in a hyper real environment, the conversion percentages are going to increase. So instead of converting one, one and a half percent of those customers, we probably get closer to the company average which is eight to 10% of conversions. And that automatically increases your sales drastically. Post sales, you buy a house from us or anyone else buys a house from us, you wait three, four years for handover. In that time, we're going to offer you the products such that you can log in and you can interact with our communities. You can interact with your neighbors. You can be in touch with us as a brand. And I think that's very important, building that um, brand equity with our customers and our partners. Can you share Damak's plans for further global expansion? And are you looking at new regions? So we have a project coming up in Miami, which we're very excited about. Uh, we handed over our tower in London this uh, mid last year, mid-2022. Our customers are extremely happy with that product. We're very happy with that product as well. Uh, we have our resort coming up in the Maldives. Mm -hmm. We will be having more resorts coming up in the Maldives. We're looking at Bali, Thailand, Mauritius, Seychelles to position our resorts globally. We're also always looking at key major global gateway cities, Hong Kong, New York, Los Angeles, uh, Germany. So to if you ask us where I want to be in 2030, I would love to see key, prod, uh, key buildings and projects of Damak in all the major global financial hubs and cities. And what are you most excited about? I'm extremely excited about our resort coming up in the Maldives. I'm, I go diving five times a year, the most remote places like Fiji, French Polynesia, you know, so I love diving with four meter sharks and <laughs> yeah, so for me, Maldives is super exciting. Ali Sajwani, thanks so much for today's Thank interview. Thank you very much.